So welcome to the next part of the build series. Uh, I'm going to be uploading the firmware today and uh, commissioning the printer. So I'm running Marlin 2.0. I downloaded the latest version from the Marlin website from their GitHub. I've compiled it in platform IO. I know you can use different um, different environments to, to do that, but this is the one I picked inside of Microsoft Visual Studio. Uh, I'm going to link you to another really good resource that can walk you step by step through that. That's not my area of expertise, so uh, there's no need to redo that. So I've connected my laptop to the RAM board via USB and compiled the firmware. And now I'm testing everything out. So um, you will need some sort of uh, machine control. So either Proner Face or uh, I'm using Simplify 3D's machine control panel. And you'll need to go through and jog the controls around and see if everything is set up correctly. So right now I'm going to jog the carriage uh, positive X. So it should go this way. This is the front of the machine. So positive X should be to the right, 10 millimeters. And so it went to the left. So that means that I have my stepper motors plugged in uh, backwards or in my firmware, I have them uh, flipped. So I'm gonna make that change in the firmware. In the configuration.h file, there's a, a place where you can invert X direction. I just changed those to false. So each one of my steppers was uh, reversed. So the X direction, Y direction, Z direction, and my extruder were all flipped. So I made that change. So I've got the firmware re-uploaded. You have to disconnect from Visual Studio. You have to basically close it out and then open up your control panel. Make sure that you have the correct baud rate uh, selected. Mine's 25 or 250,000. That's what works for me. Now I'm going to test to see if the uh, X and Y steppers are working correctly. So I'm going to advance 10 millimeters to the right. That's positive. Okay, that works. So the direction is correct. Now I'm going to try to go 10 uh, in the Y direction. So that should be towards the back of the printer. So that's correct. Now I'm going to go 10 uh, directions. So that should go down. <laughs> and that works. Now I'm gonna test the extruder. So I've got to preheat to do that. Uh, I've heated up the, the hot end to 215 degrees. So that's like a PLA uh, temperature. So that's working fine. So once I turn on my fans, I can see that my cooling fan on my case is spinning. I can see here on the control, the LCD, that the animation is spinning. And I can see on my hot end, our X carriage, that the, the scroll cage fan is spinning. The next thing I'm going to check is the heated bed. Then I'm going to preheat the bed. I can see that the light came on inside the control board. I can open the door. I can see my SSR light is on. A little red LED comes on. Uh, I can see that the temperature is rising, so that's good. That means that it's actually heating. So my bed is preheating. So I've got some PLA loaded. I'm going to extrude 10 millimeters. And so it's flowing freely. That means my hot end is set up correctly. So now I'm going to have to try to home the X and Y. So it looks like it's going in the correct direction. And I'm on the emergency stop if needed. Okay, so X home correctly. Now I'm gonna home Y. Okay, so the end stop twisted around and that's the noise that you heard. And so that was a not good. So I need, need, just need to tighten that back up. Okay, I tightened up the flag. So let's see if this is gonna work. Okay, that's better. Now I'm going to home X.
Okay, so both X and Y homing are working correctly. Now I'm going to get a piece of metal, in my case just a uh, ruler, and when I hold it close to the inductive probe, the light comes on. So I'm going to home Z, but then I'm going to trick the printer into thinking that the bed is, is already there. So we've got a situation here where I'm trying to raise the Z. Um, it doesn't want to work unless I push up on the Z axis. So if I press up on Z and I push on the bottom of the bed. So I didn't get footage of this, but what I finally figured out was that the voltage for my stepper driver uh, was too low. I turned that up using the pot switch there and that completely solved my problems uh, with my Z axis. Okay, I ran into a few issues. I'm gonna go over these just to, you know, in case you have the same issues, you'll know how to solve the problem. So I had an extra sensor, an inductive sensor, and uh, this is the one that I had on the, the printer to begin with, and it was not sensing uh, properly. So I had a backup, I installed the backup, um, it's working, I'm not sure what's wrong with this probe, it just didn't, whenever the light came on, it just didn't uh, produce the correct voltages, so I'm not not quite sure, but I did have a backup, which is good. So once you get this installed, what I like to do is go ahead and tighten all four corners, maybe like two or three turns. That way the springs are under tension. Then you want to home your X carriage. And then you want to make it to where maybe you turn off the motors. And then you want to make it to where the bed is just barely touching the nozzle. And then you loosen these two nuts and lower the Z probe until the light comes on. And that way you have the probe set at the, the right position. And then tighten these nuts back up. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a home all. And be ready to kill the printer if you need to. Okay, so it homed, and now after the homing sequence, it lowered the bed by 10. So I'm going to raise the bed by 10. Oh, the other way. Okay, so this is the bed's, or this is the printer zero right here. And I'm going to take a little business card and slide it underneath the uh, nozzle, and I want it you know, just to create a little bit of uh, friction. That's going to be the perfect first layer if I can just get this business card directly under the nozzle. And then if, uh, if I can't, I'm going to step it up a little bit at a time and that's going to become my Z offset. Uh, there's lots of good videos on how to set your Z probe offset and you can do that through your LCD or your uh, firmware. So now that I've done that, I'm going to disable the stepper motors so that I can move the carriage by hand and I'm going to move the carriage to each of the corners so I can get a rough bed level. So I'm going to slide the cart underneath. It's really not wanting to go so I'm going to keep tightening this corner until I can get it underneath. Okay and then I'm going to loosen it back up until I feel some resistance. Okay, so that side's good. Now I'm going to move it all the way across. And I'm going to watch out for my bed clip. Let's make sure everybody can see what's going on. And so this side's really low. I need to raise this side up. And you want to make sure that your, uh, your bed is level on your Z. Uh, your z-axis, the acme rods, it is possible that this side is lower than this side. So we can measure that with a, uh, a small ruler and just to make sure we're going to measure the height between the, the bed and some fixed point on each side just to get a comparison. So on this side we have 
right at 13 uh, between this bracket and the bottom of the blue bracket. So 13. The other side should be 13. So this side is 11. So that's why we're having leveling issues. So I need to raise the other side up by two, two millimeters, and that will get us more level. So I'm gonna tighten this down again, just so I don't crash it. And I'm gonna raise this by hand until I can get it to 11. Okay, now I'm at 11. Let me check the other side and make sure that I'm still at 11. Yep, still at 11. So this side needs to be tightened down. There we go. And now I have just a little bit of friction, so that's good. I'm gonna move the carriage to the back corner, the back right corner. Do the same thing. And then we'll try in the middle. A little bit low in the middle. There's a little bit of sag. Just a tiny bit, but hopefully mesh bed leveling will help us all that. Now we're gonna to try to set our E-steps. So what I, this is my preferred method. I take a Sharpie and I mark on the rod like this. And then in the controller, I ask it to move 100 millimeters and then I measure it. Okay, so now when I measure that, it should be exactly 100. And it's 50. So that means that my E-steps are about half of what they should be. So I need to uh, double my E-steps. So I doubled my E-steps. I'm gonna make another mark. There, I'm going to ask the printer to move 100 millimeters to the right. Okay, I'm going to measure from the carriage to my mark. And it's pretty much dead on. So right now they're 160. And so I'm going to say that it's pretty good. I'll calibrate this later with a calibration cube. I'll do the same thing on the Y axis. Yep, that's dead on as well. So the X and the Y are calibrated. Now to calibrate the Z E steps, I'm going to make a mark right up here with my Sharpie. And then I'm going to ask the printer to add 100 to the Z direction. And that looks really good. Right at 100. Okay, so X, Y, and Z are all calibrated. The next step is to calibrate the E steps on the extruder. My preferred method for calibrating the extruder is uh, again to use the Sharpie method. I'm going to uh, preheat my hot end. I'm going to measure out away from the edge of the extruder. 100 millimeters, then I'm gonna make a mark with my Sharpie right on the filament. Then I'm gonna ask the extruder to extrude 100. Okay, so it didn't get anywhere close. We're still quite a far away and right now 
I'm at 50. So I need to double my E steps on my extruder. So now I'm gonna double my E steps. steps so this needs to be roughly doubled so I'm gonna set it to 204 and see where that gets us Okay, now we're gonna try again. So I changed my E steps to 200, and I'm extruding 100 millimeters of filament, and there's my mark. I don't know how well that's gonna show up on camera, but it should stop just at the edge of the extruder. Now we're gonna go through our mesh bed leveling. Okay, so that was successful. One last thing we're going to do is a PID auto tune. So I'm running that in Simplify 3D. And that's the M303 command. That's going to be on the E1, heater E1. It's going to cycle eight times at a temperature of 60 degrees, so that's for our bed. Here are the values for the PID autotune. I also did the autotune on the hot end. And so here is the first calibration print that I did. Ended up having a loose pulley on one of the XY stepper motors, and so the whole print came out skewed. I later uh, tightened that up and fixed my problem. So with the second calibration cube, I was playing with the linear advance values. You can see on the corners, there's some under extrusion. So I just turned the linear advance down. I finally settled on 0.8. That's gonna be different for every printer. It depends on your setup, uh, your Bowden tube, your extruder, your hot end. So you're gonna to have to test it yourself. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching the build series. If you have any questions, please let me know.